All right, guys, welcome back. So today we are on day three of working with Luna. Today, what I'm gonna try to focus on a lot is her off-leash ability. Um, last night, we had a really big breakthrough uh, with the boys, with her being out and being loose around them. Um, she did really, really well. Never saw really any teeth or any hackles coming up. Um, and she was doing much, much better about if she did get into a precarious situation, um, making sure that she was leaving instead of staying in that spot. Um, and that's something that I've been really encouraging her to do is that if she starts to get fearful, remove herself from the situation instead of just staying in it and continuing to escalate. So she's coming a long way with that as far as changing her reaction um, when she is scared. She's still getting scared, but we're, like I said in my previous video, we're trying to change that emotional response. So one thing that I wanted to touch on before I went ahead and showed you this next video is I want to talk a little bit more about like fear reactivity and what fear reactivity really means and kind of get a better understanding of it, okay? So when our dog is being fear reactive, essentially what's happening is they are becoming completely paralyzed by their fear and essentially having a panic attack or what would be really close to a panic attack in a human being. So if you have a human being that is having a panic attack and you just tell them to sit down, are they gonna stop having that panic attack? No, now they're just gonna be having a panic attack while they're sitting down, right? So the caveat would be maybe having them sit down, have them like grab onto something, have them ground themselves, have them start doing breathing exercises with you and start actually controlling that reaction. Um, obviously, if you were to have the ability to intervene before they are all the way to the panic attack, that's great. Like if you see somebody who's heavy breathing or whatever, and you can like kind of talk to them, get them to control their heavy breathing, ground themselves before it makes it to that point even better, right? And the same exact principle applies with dogs. We want to try to redirect them and get that emotional feeling under control before they have the opportunity to escalate that behavior. So while you're watching this video, what I want you to really pay attention to is Luna's body language. Um, you'll see in the gate, like while she's still in the gate, her body language is very happy. It's very confident. Her tail is wagging. Um, she's very bubbly. Even when the boys approach, that does not change. So obviously I'm rewarding her very heavy during that time. I'm letting her know that I love that confidence. I love that excitement. Um, and then when I let her out, that same body language continued. She was still very confident, very happy, um, tail high, wagging. She was loose. She was comfortable. That's what we want to see. Um, then a little bit later in the video, you'll see that there's a couple situations where like she definitely starts to get a little bit more nervous, um, especially when she goes down by the house and she kind of like sees those air conditioners. Not sure what it was about them, maybe just the noise, but they made her very nervous. So in that situation, I was letting her kind of check it out. And then I'm like, you're okay, come on, let's go. And then she redirected and you could see her kind of take a little deep breath. But because I knew that she was already in an elevated state of fear, I'm not going to keep pushing that, nor am I going to put her or the boys in a situation that would push that. So you'll notice after I see her starting to get fearful, I'm really going to try to keep the boys away from her a little bit more. And I'm going to reward her for staying positive, especially when the boys are coming near her. Um, then after that in the video, you'll see there's a situation where she was greeting with Bruce. It was all very sweet. They kind of gave each other a little kiss back and forth, which is great. That's what I want to see. Um, but then when and then she went ahead, checked out Bruce down below. I rewarded her for that. And then Bruce went to give her a little sniff back. That's when she started getting nervous, right? At first she was okay. And then it was kind of an extended sniff. And then she started getting not so okay. So that's when I'm going to go ahead and disengage her before she has the opportunity to sit there and get paralyzed by her fear and then go into a panic mode, right? I want to just disengage her, let her know, hey, if you're not comfortable, let's go ahead and pull away from this situation. Um, and that's what we want to do. Okay. 
it's not that we don't want to acknowledge that our dogs are afraid because if we're not acknowledging that they're afraid um, and kind of helping them remove that remove themselves from that situation then they don't know anything else um, and if a dog feels like they're going to be forced to stay in a situation that's when you're going to see that escalation occur so um, you'll see with her as soon as I saw her start getting kind of like hunched over her hair might have come up a little bit I'm not sure I was kind of more focused on making sure but I saw her ears go back and she got real nervous and kind of slinky so I went ahead and called her away rewarded her for being nice and then her and Bruce went ahead and exchanged a couple more sniffs so it was really good um, and especially because she was already kind of in a heightened fear from the AC um, the fact that she was still willing to disengage with me and she was still willing to remove herself from that situation instead of escalating that's exactly what we want to see and that's the progress that we're working towards so overall we had a very very good um little session out there today um she definitely looked much much more confident especially around her she she didn't growl she didn't show her teeth her hair didn't go up not even a single time around him um, and they were out, they were sniffing together, they were checking stuff out together. Um, so we're doing good things here. Uh, I understand that a lot of this fear reactivity stuff, um, it's slow moving, which especially for people who, you know, they are used to seeing a lot of results fast, it can be very difficult. And that's coming from my own feelings, right? I'm very much one of those people where like, I'm a fixer, I'm a problem solver. I want to be able to fix things fast so that they're not affecting me or the people that I love. However, there are just some issues that you have to take slow and fear reactivity is one of them. You, I'm sure you've noticed, like I have taken a lot of time to like let her know that she can trust me, that like if I'm asking her to do something, it's because I know that she's safe or I'm gonna be able to keep her safe. And as a result, she trusts me a lot more and she's a lot more willing to say hello and sniff other dogs and let them sniff her because she knows that when in doubt, I'm gonna go ahead and disengage her and get her out of there when she starts feeling uncomfortable. Now, I know that for a lot of people, that's not necessarily ideal for your dog, right? You don't wanna necessarily have to manage every single one of the interactions that they have with other dogs, but the truth is not all dogs are cut from the same thread. And just because you have like, let's say a Labrador that are te generally really sociable with people and other dogs, does not mean that your dog is going to. Um, every single dog is an individual and those individuals get impacted by their experiences. Obviously, as we've discussed before, Luna has had some experiences where she learned that she can't trust all dogs. Um, and that on top of that, that she didn't necessarily have the tools to know how to handle a situation like that. So, um, you know, with Luna, where I'm hoping to get her to the point is where like, I'm, I have no illusions that suddenly she's just not gonna be fearful anymore and that suddenly she's gonna be the most amazing dog in the world. But I also can't have her just attacking dogs on site anytime that she gets a little bit uncomfortable. So what we're trying to do is find a really nice balance. Um, we're trying to get her to the point where like she feels confident in her handler and that they are gonna handle those situations appropriately. That way, if she is feeling nervous or she is feeling shy, she knows that she just needs to let us know and that we're gonna help get her out of that situation. So, so far, so good. Um, day three, I'm very happy with where we're at so far. Um, there have been huge improvements, like I said, especially in terms of her relationship with Hershey. Um, and as I think I've mentioned before, Hershey can kind of be difficult for other dogs anyways, just because he has extremely tight personal boundaries um, and he holds those boundaries pretty strong. Like he, um, he is very much one of those dogs where he really doesn't give a crap about anybody except for me and his brothers. And if you want to get in on her, she, you have to earn his love. So, um, the fact that these two are kind of coexisting with one another, um, and that they're just doing really well and they're kind of figuring out what works for them is what I want to see. Um, you can never expect your dog to be friends with every single dog they meet just like you can't expect yourself or your kids or whatever to be friends with every single person that they meet right there's just going to be some people that don't mix so my my final note today is that like 
on top of managing it and being there for your dog and letting them know that if they're afraid it's okay to retreat as an owner you also have to be um understanding of the fact that like your dog just might not like certain dogs you know maybe their personality doesn't mesh um, for dogs like Luna, who have pretty strict personal boundaries, dogs who are constantly in her face, not going to be a good dog for her to be around, especially not for an extended period of time. Um, so, you know, those are just some more things to keep in mind, okay? Um, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you the video. And like I said, I want you to pay really close attention to her body language. I want to see if you can pick up on when it shifts. Um, and I want you to pay attention to when I'm disengaging her as I see that body language changing. That way I can reward her for not escalating. And I can reward her for, you know, the little stuff like saying hello without snarling or saying hello without her hapless going up. I'm rewarding her a lot right now because I want to be able to reward every single one of those positive interactions that I see, even if that means her moving away from them when she gets uncomfortable, because that's still a positive interaction, regardless of if it's what I think she should be able to do or what I think I want her to be able to do. It, I don't get to decide what my dog is and is not afraid of. Um, so all I can do is kind of facilitate that and help her learn how to set those boundaries and respond appropriately when she's scared. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that video now. Good girl. As you can see, she came right over to the gate, even with her, she's standing nearby. Um, and since he was kind of the one that she was a lot more hesitant of and fearful of. That's a really good sign. Good girl. Good girl. Now Bruby's coming over. Let's see how she reacts. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. Okay. Okay, boys. Can we back up a little bit? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back the boys up. Bruby, back up, back up, back up. Good boy, sit. Sit. Good boy. Okay. Stay. Okay, Luna, you want to come out? So another thing I'm going to do when I'm letting Luna out is I'm going to put myself between her and the other dogs. That way she doesn't immediately get nervous and feel like she has to slink by them. Good girl. Good girl, so nice. Yes. Good boy, good girl, okay. So now we're just gonna walk around, let her kind of get some of her bubbliness out a little bit. As you can see, her body language is much, much better than it has been. Um, she looks excited to play, she looks happy, um, which is great because she didn't really show any fear at all today while her she was right there um, or even when Bruce approached, which is a huge um, advancement from yesterday. Luna! Hey, hey! <whistles> Come! Sit! Good girl. Good girl. And again, she's just coming right over. And even when the boys are close. Good girl. Yes. Okay, so now let's uh, do a little more walking around. I do, like I said, I want her to be able to stretch her legs. I want her to be able to get some exercise and get a little bubbliness out. All the while, we're just going to be keeping an eye on her body language. Oh, boys. You can see for the most part, though, Luna really, like, she's a lot more of an independent dog than I think what we might have realized. Um, I think she does do very well on her own. She kind of just wants to be able to do her own thing. That's another reason why I think she gets so reactive when dogs are all up in her business and she can't get away from them. So, um, you know, letting her do her own thing and kind of explore and do that is important. And it's important that we help her learn that just because there's other dogs out and about doesn't mean they're always going to be all up on her and that she is allowed to separate herself and do her own thing if she wants. Luna! Okay, so we're still seeing good body language. She's out sniffing. 
Hershey just walked by her a couple of seconds ago. As you can see, she can get right close to Hershey now without really freaking out. I think she has now learned that as long as she leaves Hershey alone, he's going to leave her alone, which I think she really appreciates. Wasn't expecting to get dirt kicked in her face, but... Good girl, that's so nice. So right there, as soon as she gave him a little sniff, you could see her body language did get a little bit nervous. So what I did is I just rewarded her for sniffing and then disengaging. That's a good girl. Because what I wanna do is I wanna be able to reward her for any even small positive inter interaction. But then I wanna be sure that I'm disengaging her before she has the ability to kind of get caught up in her fear. Um, something that's important to remember about dogs who are fear reactive is the more we can keep them from getting just paralyzed in that fear, the better. Um, so sometimes I try to disengage them before they even have the chance. Hershey! So that was really nice. Um, she let Hershey come up right beside her and sniff the ground. But then I'm going to go ahead and disengage him that way just to give her a little bit more space. Uh, not to say that I don't trust her, but... You know, I'm really just trying not to push her limits right now. Good girl. Come here. Shh, you're okay. You scared of the ACs? So as you can see, even right now, she's definitely showing a lot more fearful body language there. Which brings me to an important point is that if you have a dog who is fear reactive and you see them getting fearful or shy um, around something else, that's the time, Hershey, good boy. That's the time that we want to make sure that we're giving her a little bit of extra space. Um, because once her heightened, her senses are already heightened, even if it has nothing to do with the other dog involved, we don't want to continue to push her or heighten that fear. Good girl. Good girl. See, you could see right there. She got a little jumpy when Hershey approached and then she realized he was just sniffing and she just disengaged and came back to me. Um, that's beautiful. That's exactly what we want to see. And since she still seems a little nervous with the ACs, I'm just going to bring her back away from that. Good girl. Good girl. And the further away from the house we get, I'm just hoping to see um, her body language kind of loosen up a little bit more and get a little bit more relaxed. Because as you can tell, she's still kind of slinking a little bit. Um, she's kind of keeping her ears back just a little bit. And I just want to see her relax again. Come on. Good dogs. Come on. Let's go. Good dogs. You can see even right there, she's checking in with me a lot. I love to see that. That just means, oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Good girl. See, it's just Bruby. Good girl. That was so nice. That was so nice. As you can see, her body language around Hershey now is much, much more relaxed than it used to be. Um, she isn't immediately getting petrified by him. Good boy. Good girl. Ow. And when she did finally get a little bit nervous, she made her way over here. And that's okay. And you can see her body language is definitely a little bit more nervous. Good girl. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Thank you. Easy. Good girl. Oh, poopy. Good boy. Okay. So while the interactions are still going really well, good girl. Good girl, Bruce. Easy. Easy. Well, Luna. Good girl. See? Bruce, that's enough. Bruce. That's enough. Good boy. Thank you. 
So hopefully I didn't mess the video up there, but you could see that she went for a sniff and then Bruce went for a sniff and she did start to get a little nervous. Good girl. So I'm just gonna kind of disengage her from that a little bit. That way, like I said, her fear doesn't continue to rise. And that time, I don't know if you saw, but she didn't she didn't really get too, too overly scared. Um, she was a little nervous and tried to retreat, which is great. Um, but she didn't snarl, didn't raise her hackles, didn't show teeth. Um, and dogs going behind her is something she's been really struggling with. So very, very happy about that.